And like I said, I want to get this stuff covered because I got there's some things coming up I got to do here in the near future. I've got some more preparation to do. I've got some local stuff I want to do, and and uh, it's very important to me. And and uh, but I wanted to get these videos out, and I hope and pray that you'll find time to watch them. I don't know how long it'll be, but let me get back to something about the uh, you know the, the the there's a misconception today going around that that there's no such thing as, as speaking in tongues, that, that the person speaks in tongues and edifies himself in the Holy Spirit, that that was done away with, and that uh, it also says that there's, there's people that say that there's no healing anymore. Okay, well, you know, and they say if it is speaking in tongues or if it is healing, they, I quote, I quote, there are certain people that say that it is done by Satan. Well, let me just go back and tell you what Jesus said. He said if... Uh, if a kingdom is divided against itself, it won't stand. He said, if Satan cast out Satan, his kingdom is divided. So having said that, if you have a man of God, and like I said, you draw your own conclusions, you make your own, you make your own conclusions, and you have to work out your own salvation with trembling and fear before God. So if you have a man that believes in God, that prays, and by the way, that still fast, uh, that same sect of people don't believe in fasting anymore, neither, and Jesus said something only come by fasting and praying, but today it's not popular to fast. I understand that because we've got a bunch of glutton, backslid people. No wonder God can't heal through a bunch of uh, so-called preachers because they backslid, weak, and anemic, and they don't understand the power of God, neither do they seek and, and fast and, and seek the face of God to understand and attain and have that power flowing through their hands in certain occasions as the Holy Spirit gives what? utterance and as the Holy Spirit deems necessary. That's the difference between calling yourself a Christian and being led by the Holy Spirit, submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit. Now, having said that, let me get back to the, uh, so the gifts of the Spirit have ceased is what people would tell you. Well, I would tell you that they're a hypocrite, heathen liar that does not have God in them, okay? Now, uh, having said that, uh, I make no bones about it because when it comes to defending the Word of God and what I believe, then I will defend it to the end of my last breath. Just like I will defend my family and my wife and my friends. It's just that simple. You know, that's the difference in being a, a true man and not a true man. See? Now, back to the gifts for a minute. So this person says that it's done by the power of Satan. Well, that's the same things the Pharisees said about Jesus when he himself was healing people. And I, by the way, it says in the book of John, Jesus said, greater things uh, than I have done you will do because of going to my Father. So Jesus obviously died on the cross. He went to his Father. And for a narrow window of opportunity right there, just for a little bit, just for a little bit, healings took place. And then all of a sudden, during a Corinthian church that were bickering and backbiting, that Paul was rebuking, all of a sudden the gifts were done away with. They were just done away with. And by the way, another sign as far as speaking in tongues is for the unbeliever. Go read your Bible if you want to. And if you don't want to, that's fine. Because I'm to the point, and, I, and, and like I said, I've got some other things I've got to do. And uh, God's leading in an direction, and for everything, there's a time and a season. So, uh, But in any event, I urge you and challenge you to look at the Word of God for yourself and understand the meaning of the Word of God and not just take, don't take my advice for it and surely to God in heaven don't take some, some, uh, uh, some parasite that calls himself a Christian that don't believe that Jesus is still able to heal today, that don't believe that there's a baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus told the disciples, be, uh, tear in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. Go read it in the book of Acts. And then all of a sudden, when you get to the Corinthian church, it's done away with, give me a, give me a break. I understand that, 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 that tongues will cease. I understand that the, the, the gifts will cease. That day has not come yet. There's still sickness and disease. Okay? There is still people that seek the power of God and seek His face. Okay? And believe in Him. And I understand. I understand why they, you know, in certain sects of, of so-called churches that there's not a, a lot of healing, if, if any, going on because it's hard for God to work with a bunch of backslid, anemic, weak, spineless Christians that won't stand for God no matter the cost. I understand that. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm serious. I, I understand that there's a lot that don't happen. But God's not going to, God's not going to cast His pearls before the swine. So, in any event, uh, I want you to know and understand that no way, shape, form, or fashion do I have all the answers. I want you to know and understand that just as I did a study on the arguments against the pre-tribulation rapture, 
That's what I see from scriptures. Now, there's others that see other things and that they believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. Well, if you're a grown adult, we can agree to disagree. Okay? Now, but when it comes to blaspheming the Holy Spirit, that's something I've got to take issue with, see? Because the Holy Spirit is the very one that distributes the gifts. And the Holy Spirit is the one that causes the fruit, the fruits of the Spirit also. I guess they've ceased too, some think. Okay? But having said that, if you look at the context of the Scripture and understand what Paul was talking to in the Corinthian church, what they were doing was they were abusing the gifts and Paul didn't say that the gifts were done away with then because Paul was only a man just like you and me. Yeah, he was an apostle, but he was only a man like you and me. You understand what I'm saying? And he was rebuking the Corinthians because of their malicious acting and their malicious discontentment for the spiritual gifts. And he was telling them that, look, if you don't have the greatest gift, which is love, in the congregation, the ecclesia of the body, that all these other things don't matter. Because if you don't have that love toward the brethren then you can do all you want to. You become a sounding brass and a tingling cymbal, you see. Now, have I expanded all on this? No, i got pages and pages of notes here. But for the sake of time, you got a Bible. If you ain't, I suggest you get one and start going by the book. Now, I want to move on to another subject real quick here about a biblical response for those that say that we should disarm and not have our weapons to protect our family from the physical evil that is rampant in this nation and across this globe. Okay? Now, to me, and this is just an opinion, you have to be an illiterate, stupid hypocrite to say that end time watchmen, scuba man, general, the list goes on and on, do not have the right to number one, of freedom of speech under the Constitution. To number two, the, the Second Amendment, the right of people to keep and bear arms. Okay? Bear arms. If you've got enough sense, and you know what I'm talking to, go look in the dictionary and see what it means. Okay? Now, having said that, to make a malicious, uh, slanderous statement to say that an end time watchman has illegal firearms is liable and slander, and it, it is. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. And to make comments and say, uh, let's see here, to make comments and say that I'm a danger to my family is liable and slander, and it, and, and it brings about pain and suffering that I could function a little bit better, you know, and, and, and do things I need to do for my family, but because of these statements, it, it just sort of has me just been out of shape. And, and you know, uh, as being someone who understands a little bit about the law, uh, these pieces of paper just might flat out come in handy in that DVD I have of those slanderous lying statements about me. They just might come in handy because we do still have a little bit of law left. Now, I don't know how the wind is, but, you know, this stuff just might come in handy. Just might come in handy. You know, and, and this very person that did this, uh, you go back months, uh, and they talked about Columbine and that guns, people should have freedom for guns, and going on and on and on. Then they come here and say that this person's dangerous, he has illegal weapons, uh, his family's in danger. You know, i got to tell you something, my friend. i got to tell you something. There's a difference in free speech and, and slander and liable. But thank God, thank God in heaven for a printer, a copier, and a DVD duplicator. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. But in any event... I just figured I'd throw that out there, but uh, another part coming up.